This is Joseph Coco. I'm at MTAC 2015 on behalf of Becky Hilburn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking Natto Soup. If you could introduce yourself, Caitlin. Uh, my name is Caitlin Delahanty, and I'm an artist from Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, and what brings you to MTAC from all the way in Indiana? Uh, actually, I went to MTAC as an attendee back in about 2003, and then I came as an artist in the artist alley because I actually saw Becca's review of her time last year at MTAC, so I decided to try it out. <laughs> That's awesome. So would you advise, uh, this is towards the end of the convention, would you advise other artists who have a similar style to you to uh, check out MTAC, even if it's a little bit of a trek for them as well? Absolutely. Um, the attendees here are absolutely fantastic. Uh, all the commissions I've gotten this weekend are amazing. Everyone's been super nice. It's been a super well-organized, like really nice con. The artist alley is really nice, so I would highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, I've certainly gotten a lot of positive experiences just from talking with customers here at this convention, more so than uh, other conventions. People just seem to respond really well to uh, all the artwork and artists uh, here, even though it is divided among multiple hotels, which yeah. can be a little bit of a logistic uh, problem for some people. But um, if you could tell me a little bit about um, uh, how you interact with customers, what are you selling mostly? Prints? Um, I sell prints, uh, original art cards, buttons, and then do, I do a lot of my uh, work with commissions. And then I also sell handmade books. Uh, as that was kind of part of my degree is I, I make books and then I make comics. Uh, but I do a lot of commissions, so most of the time people look at my work and see if it's it's something that would fit the idea that they have okay. and, and commission me and I get most of them done at con. And then I've gotten really good review, uh, positive reviews of, I do a lot of sports anime and a lot of pretty boys, so that's a lot of the commissions that I get. Okay. Uh, and I've gotten to meet like a lot of people who are into the same fandoms and a lot of the same interests as me. Okay, so a lot of the prints that you have are kind of just to draw people in so that they can get um, to talking about their particular favorite anime or manga and that leads to, hey, I can do a commission of that. Yeah, pretty much definitely yeah. a lot of my commissions come after I've been squeeing for about 15 minutes of some sort of sports anime or uh, anime with, with people and then they'll mention something that they're interested in half the time it's something I'm interested in and then it, it goes from there. So I have gotten a lot of positive reviews just of the prints as well uh, and my style which is always nice as an artist. <laughs> Okay. And um, have you done other anime conventions similar to MTAC in the past, or is this one of your first? Uh, this is actually my first. I've done a few anime conventions tabling uh, many, many, many years ago, like before I went to art school and back when I was like a young a young teenager. Yeah. Uh, but this is my first anime convention getting back into tabling conventions. I've done like a general pop culture convention. I've done like a little independent show. I've done the Small Press Expo last year. Right. Which uh, is and much then, larger scale than MTAC. Yeah, and then um, uh, like a comic convention up in Indianapolis because Indianapolis is a good hub for conventions as a whole. Yeah, I've actually interviewed a couple artists. Um, I believe it was at SPX who are from Indiana. Yeah, I was really surprised because I've been going to SPX for about four years. How many artists are from Indiana and like the Midwest at SPX who yeah. make the long, long trek out east? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how would you say MTAC compares to some of those other conventions? Obviously, it's not quite the same. Um, it's been really positive. Uh, I feel like the size and the ratio of the artists to the attendees is better than like the last one I did was Indie Comic Con. It was about twenty to thirty thousand people, right. but the artist alley had about two hundred artists, wow. uh, and that was like a much and more varied group. And in like tech, is much closer to about six to seven thousand people. And how many artists would you say are here? Maybe seventy or seven, less. Uh, there's like twenty five tables, and it looks like half are sharing. So like okay, maybe so max thirty four, to like forty. 30 to 40. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost twice the ratio. I did the math, and it's like yeah. There's a lot more traffic too, which is nice. Whereas with Comic Cons and other pop culture conventions, it's all a lot about the guests uh, yeah. and like finding those old like in traditional comics uh, and talking to like artists of those comics and. MTech's been a really good experience of people who seem to really care and are interested in buying art and talking about art right. uh, and, and talking 
talking more about. More than just a dealer's room. Exactly. And it's it's like I've seen a lot of people with dealer's room bags, but people also come to the artist alley and are are wanting to spend money on artists too. Okay. And can you tell me a little bit about your commission process? I mean, we talked about how you would um, get someone interested in the idea of a commission, but once you actually get the commission, are you doing pencils or inks mostly? Any color work? Um, it's been kind of surprising. I've across the board of equal amounts. Like I've gotten quite a few sketch, I've gotten quite a few ink, uh, and I've gotten quite a few color. So it really, it kind of just seems to be whatever price point that they're wanting to go with. And right. They, they come they in with, with a certain amount of money and yeah, say, what I, can I get for this? It's been almost equal, like pencils, inks, color, which has been interesting because most of the time it's like pencil or, or ink and not the, the full color because it's going to be pricey. A little more expensive. People kind of want to go all, all, <laughs> all out, all out. <laughs> yeah. And so pretty much they approach me with an idea and I take down all of their information. Uh, half the time they just kind of say, here are the characters that I want to surprise me. Or it's like original characters, which are some of my favorite. Right. Uh, and they give you a written or... Um, yeah, and it's like I write down a description, like what kind of expression do you want, uh, maybe certain like pose. Most of the time it's just surprise me. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I kind of try and take it, inspiration of the attitude of the character and... Run with well, everyone that. seems happy with them. So okay. But you're not are my you're favorite. not filling color commissions at the convention, are you? Oh no, yeah, I am. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you're doing markers for that? I do markers, and I did one little watercolor sketch card. Uh, I do right. have a larger watercolor commission that I'm finishing after con, uh, but that was given like late last night. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I as long as it's I can do bigger ones that are color, they just kind of tend to take me a little bit longer, and that's when I don't get very much sleep. <laughs> Okay. And I noticed you had a half table here. Is that something that Imtac orchestrated, or you got in touch with someone who you knew was interested in also sharing a table? Um, I, I secured the table, and then I got my friend Morgan, uh, who we go to conventions together. We yep. both live in Indianapolis, and we went to school together. And we've shared it like a few cons before. And I was like, hey, it's like it's far away con. Don't really know how it's gonna go yet. Yeah, it would uh, help to have a little bit of that cost alleviated. Yeah, it's like splitting the hotel, someone to drive with me during the five-hour drive, so that you don't, so don't go crazy. Don't Crazy. Or listen to Night Vale for eight hours. <laughs> so I did that on the way to SBX. <laughs> going through Virginia, listening to Night Vale is great. <laughs> okay. When it's 3 a.m. <laughs> Good thing to know. Um, so you say that uh, you have some uh, comics. These are just uh, books. Those are just handmade books. I, journals, had, right? I had my comics out the first day, um, but I, I didn't have enough room for them. Yeah. Uh, but I've got kind of like an issue zero of a comic that I'm working on that I've got like the first chapter all penciled out that I'm working on that involves two characters that I have I have prints of right uh, and I'm kind of trying to get the first chapter done before posting it online it's going to be a full color watercolor comic uh, and I want to get the first chapter done before kind of deciding if I want to finish it all and then post it or just build that buffer and turn it into a webcomic and work with it as I go yeah see how your audience is responding to it yeah sort of exactly thing. okay and that's it's a um, black and white comic or full color? It'll be full color. Yeah, okay, full so it's going to be a little expensive to print. Color. So yes. maybe digital distribution might be best. Exactly, and kind of build that audience before I, I get into the printing process. Yeah. But I've, I've been talking to a lot of other comic artists, both at SPX um, and here in other conventions, of what they recommend for printing and, and talking with other comic artists of their process and what they do for distribution, which is always really helpful to talk with. Yeah, because there's certainly a lot of nightmare stories, especially about first-time printers, so yep, it's always absolutely. best to talk to somebody before going with any source, no matter how credible. Yeah, I'm not ordering 100 copies of that issue one comic. <laughs> especially you before you even get a test piece, which yep. I'm sure some people yep. do, uh, because everyone seems to be pressed for deadlines, so yep. you, you always need to make it to that, that convention. Always. Um, so, what was your experience, uh, I mean, I, I realize you knew a lot about MTAC coming into it, just because of Becca's reviews, and you probably spoke with her online through Twitter or something along those lines, uh, just to get a better feel for the convention. But what was your experience um, coming down to Nashville? You've got a hotel here with a friend. Uh, were there any issues, I would say, uh, traveling uh, a long distance for an anime convention? It was, I mean, it rained a lot yeah. coming down. Um, other 
otherwise, I'm kind of used to driving. I like driving a lot. Like I've driven out to the East Coast for conventions, uh, and my family and I used to go to conventions. It's like our family vacations, and we, we would drive all out throughout the Midwest. Uh, so no really issues. I think the main thing when driving to a convention is making sure that your car can handle it, yeah. uh, and that you have good Google Maps directions printed out both ways going there and going In case your cell phone dies and you <laughs> forget your charger. your cell phone dies and you forget your charger, and always put reverse directions because they are not the same. <laughs> okay, but good advice. It's super easy, uh, and I, so, I always encourage people to travel if they can, because it's like five hours seems like a lot, but once you're on the road, it kind of... Yeah, like, especially with a friend. It's nice, yeah. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about your comic? I'm sorry, I didn't catch the title of it. It's called Faded. Um, it's the story of two princes from two kind of like opposing societies that end up meeting completely by chance and the aftermath that ensues after that and how it affects both them uh, and their their royal families once they become more intertwined. Okay. Um, so is it more like a, a fantasy setting or a historical um, alternative setting? It's definitely more fantasy um, because they're, they've got like deer attributes and they live in the mountains and the forest uh, respectively. Okay. And it's, it's not super high fantasy, uh, but it's definitely yeah. out, outside of this world. Yeah, not uh, too many dragons going around, but... Yeah, but they're definitely also, not fully human, um, and they've just got some like interesting different societal things going on, uh, and different genetic makeup going on than humans, so it, it would definitely be considered like a fantasy setting. Okay, and what was the inspiration for the story? Um, I have always liked making stories, uh, and I've got another story that I've been kind of working on, and I had to make a shorter screenplay for a class that was all about concept art. And I kind of been like sketching these people with like antlers, and so I started making them into solidified characters. And then I took that storyboard that I did for this kind of like shorter story that wasn't my intense longer project that I want to work on, and did character concepts, storyboards, um, different like clothing and uh, aspect designs, and landscapes. And that's how the rest of the story sort of unfolded, was doing concept work for this story for a class, and then me getting really attached to the characters and figuring out more and more of the story as it went on. Okay. And would you say that you fell into storytelling, or were you, um, are you an artist first and a writer second, or a writer first and an artist second, I guess is where I'm going with this. They really kind of came at the same time, because okay. I started drawing because of anime when I was about 12 or 13, and it was yeah. about that time that I started making uh, a story, because like I was starting to read fan fics, and I was getting really attached to characters, and I was like, hey, like I want to make my own, my own characters thing. and make these own stories and write myself, so I started writing as I started drawing, and yeah. the two of those have just kind of been linked okay. for the rest of my life, and that's why I really enjoy comics, and especially like indie comics, uh, with one creator like writing and drawing, because they have similar processes to me, of uh, just creating this world and world building and character creation, and that I feel like I can't separate my art from the storytelling. Right. They're they're intertwined and there's there's no separating them. Okay. And you said you went to college for art. Is that something that you had decided on uh, from the get go when you decided you wanted to uh, venture into becoming a professional artist, or is that something that you felt like you needed to build up your skills in order to better compete in the comics world? Um, I had always wanted to go to art school. Yeah. But I had actually started college as a marketing major. Okay. And then I switched to sociology because I didn't have a lot of support around me of going to art school and kind of trying to become a professional artist. Right. Uh, everyone was like, well, you're not going to make any money doing that. Yeah. Like, You'll hear that a lot, anyone who's considering going. And then I switched over to sociology, and then I realized there's not a lot of job opportunities in that. So if I'm going to go yeah. to college for something that's not going to get me money, I'm going to do, I'm gonna what, do what I do. love. Because I would rather make less money and do something that I love than make all the money in the world and be stuck in a job that I'm not enjoying. And that's when I started going to art school. And it helped me improve and kind of helped me get into the mindset with deadlines that 
like, it was really, really valuable to me, and I don't, I don't regret my decision. Okay. And if we wanted to find your work online, uh, where would we go to see that? Uh, my main place is uh, both on Facebook, and it's under Kai Art. It's K-E-I-C-A-I uh, Art, and then also Kai on Tumblr, and then Kai Della on Twitter. Okay, and is the issue zero of the comic posted anywhere online? It is not yet. Um, I've been posting some in-progress shots uh, of the pages, and then I, sh I should, I've been trying to figure out a good format to post the, the prequel kind of comic that I have compiled right. uh, that's more storyboard format uh, that's not quite good for, for the Tumblr format, uh, so I will be posting that shortly, like when I'm more finished with issue zero. Right, one of those comic aggregator sort of services? Yeah. 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 Like, um, so, can, how would we, if someone wanted to commission you, uh, how would they get in touch with you? Through a public uh, site like Twitter, or would you prefer to be emailed? Um, pretty much any avenue. Uh, Tumblr is okay. a little unreliable, so like, Facebook messaging, uh, emailing me, my email is uh, shulig, it's S-C-H-U-L-D-I-G at gmail.com, uh, or via Twitter or Instagram, pretty much any message. Or, and I take commissions pretty much any time. Awesome. All right, well, thank you, Caitlin. I hope you have a good impact. Great, thank you so much.